I hope someday the full story of what took place with early treatment, especially ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine and COVID is sorted out by a team with resources to really dig and access to information after the, um, the disincentive for honesty has dissipated. I hope we ultimately get the full story because what this sounds like to me is the deck was stacked by the house and they still lost. Right. If you look yep. at what they actually discovered, the point is there were all kinds of reasons that should have dampened the effect of ivermectin to the point of being useless. And yet they still saw an effect. And this isn't the first time we've seen that. Right. One thing that's on my mind, I want to make sure I, I cover is the 681 number. Right. Okay. Um, this number was uh, determined uh, based on the background rate of events, like uh, based on their primary endpoint. Um, in in the period at the time in the, in the in the region at the time, um, but on that background, they were pl- they were what they were tuning in to do was to spot a thirty seven and a half percent effect, right? So you you, you you're, this is what you're sort of assuming. If it's less than that, you have you know you have statistical power issues with eighty percent power. Um, that's what they so when they come out and say basically no effect whatsoever, no indication, whatever, whatever. No, what you what you tuned your study to do is find with 80% statistical power, a 37.5%. So if you have a drug that is 37.5% uh, effective, you expect four out of five times, if I understand the notion of statistical power correctly, to to catch it, to find it. That's that's what they that's what they that's what they did. In fact, they were kind of criticized in an open peer review about that size. They're like, this is, you're, 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 you're aiming to, to find too, too big an effect, too, uh, you know, too low the power. Why aren't you like, you know, ramping it up a little bit? Um, and, you know, the, the author sort of, uh, the, the primal, principal investigator, you know, the, his response was kind of dismissive to those comments from the invited reviewers. Um, but that's what they were, that, that's what, the, if, we, if we strictly interpret what they found, that's what they, they did not find a 37.5% um, uh, effect in a trial that had 80% statistical power. Right. That, that's, that's what happened. That's what happened. And just it, so it, essentially what you're talking about is a Bayesian version of what typically happens with a frequentist where they find an effect and it doesn't reach significance and they report that right. there was no effect. We've seen that before in, in ivermectin as, as elsewhere. But the point is, in, in this case, it's in a different language because it's Bayesian statistics and not frequentist, but it's the same problem. We can see if we look at what they actually found that in spite of many biases, all of which go in one direction, they did find an effect a notable one. And when you compare this, I mean, let's not lose track of what we're actually trying to discover. Is this drug worth giving to people uh, who have COVID, right? Right. Now, if the answer to that question was yes, then you would likely do what we've seen done all over the world. What we've seen done in India, what we've seen done in Mexico, where basically people are given access to this very safe drug very early, in many cases, even before they've had a positive test, right? And so the point is this study looks at them, yeah, it's not the latest administration of uh, ivermectin that we've seen. But nonetheless, these are people who are deeply into disease. These aren't people who at the first hint of disease have been given this drug and are given it with uh, a meal that has fat in it to facilitate its getting into the bloodstream, right? And we have these methodological issues where uh, it appears that sicker people are likely to have ended up in the placebo arm, I mean, in the in the ivermectin arm, and healthier people were liable to end up in the placebo arm. All of these things go in the same direction, and yet we still see a notable effect that even the author, the primary author of the study, says he believes indicates the drug works and that if they had added more people to the trial, that it would have passed their statistical test too. Right. Now, in the article, and I'll leave it up to you if you want to go into that, There's, I discussed two more factors that would have dampened the effects. Um, one is that the high dosing, as described, was not actually high enough. Uh, we can go into that. And the other one was the background use of ivermectin in Brazil at the time. Um, yeah, these are yeah. tremendously important. We should we should <laughs> talk about them. Okay, so um, 
let's go into the dosing. So remember what they had done with the low dose where they had put the, uh, this arbitrary limit at 60 kilograms. I have enough, I have not found any literature anywhere that describes a weight limit for ivermectin for any for treatment of anything. If you go to the NIH website and look for strongyloidus or whatever, it says, go scale it by scale it by your weight. Full stop. There's no like until, right. Um, so they had the 60 kilogram limit limit when they, when they moved it up and moved up the dose, they, they changed it to a 90 kilogram limit, right? Um, 90 kilogram limit, um, based on the average height of Brazilian men, as I, as I found some reports say 171, once some reports say 173, that means that they're, 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 uh, given that, by the way, the trial had half low BMI patients under 30, that's not low, but anyway, uh, and half high, this has, this is high, half more than very 30. high. Yeah. Um, now th around 30 BMI around 174 height is 90 kilograms, right? 91 kilograms to be precise. So it's, it's, um, almost half the men in the trial, um, in the high dose trial would have had their dose start slipping under this 400, uh, MCG per kg. And about, a I'm, I'm assuming about a third of the women, uh, because, you know, their, their, their BMI is higher for lower, for lower weights. So they would, that would not have caught them at that level, but uh, later. Um, and, and, and this, this is that this pernicious effect where high BMI is high risk, right? So the higher your risk, the lower your dose, this is weird. Like, and, and, and I, what, I, what frustrates me with this is you want to answer the question for once and for all, right? This is how the, 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 the trial is heralded. Like, why do stuff like this? Why? I, there, there's no clinical explanation I, from what I've heard from the author's camp, from people I, informally. Um, there, there's no real reason for this. Why? Right. It, why? It, 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 it's, it's unthinkable, right? And one can speculate, but there's no justification for it. But if you were looking for a way to underpower a trial that was somewhat subtle, that didn't show up in the, oh, well, what dose did they use, right? If your first question is, well, yeah, I've seen these under trial, un underpowered trials before, what dose did they use, right? Yeah. And that threshold will be missed by many people, maybe many yeah. journalists. It has no justification. And the point is because COVID is the, or the severity of COVID is so significantly correlated to BMI, yep. then the point is this is a, a critical failure. This is a critical failure. The people who are likely to get sickest are the most underdosed. Yep. Right. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't explain it. There's no, uh, again, there's no medical justification that I've seen it. It just makes no sense. And in fact, um, there, there's something or some issue I can't quite describe. I mean, if you think about comparing it to placebo, right? The point is the placebo is flat and the degree of underdosing goes up and up the heavier you are and the more vulnerable to COVID you are. Uh, there's, it's just, uh, uh, it's, it's an unthinkable failure. And the thing is, okay, maybe they've got a great reason for that. Let's hear it. Yep. No, I mean, there's just not, there's not, there's not the literature there. I think that one is, is one, when I had a chance to ask a question of one of the authors of the paper, this is the one I asked and I got told to, uh, you know, follow the process and be professional. <laughs> um, 